Hello students, drawings help you to understand a topic better and also help you with a better recall. Let's understand the shoulder joint by drawing it. This here is the humerus, the greater tubercle, the lesser tubercle. the rest of humerus. Somewhere here will be your bicipital groove. That's the head of humerus and the anatomical neck. Here you are seeing the glenoid cavity articulating with the humerus. Surrounded by the glenoid labrum. Now here is your coracoid process. the scapula, acromion process that completes the bones required to draw this diagram. Let's color the bones quickly. The scapula, the humerus, the acromion, the articular surface of humerus and the glenoid cavity and the glenoid labrum which should be a little darker just to indicate that it's a different type of cartilage. Let's now add one more important structure here. The tendon of longhero bicep brachii taking origin from the supraglenoid tubercle here. Let's color that. Now let's add the capsule of shoulder joint in place. As you are aware, capsule of jo shoulder joint is attached medially and laterally. Medially on the scapula, it's attached in such a way that it goes slightly beyond the supraglenoid tubercle so that it gets includes the tendon of longhero bicep inside the shoulder joint. Inferiorly, it is a slightly loose and laterally it gets attached to the humerus at the anatomical neck. So that's your capsule of shoulder joint. Let's color it and you will understand the effect of this capsule. See how the, the capsule includes the long head of bicep brachii inside the joint cavity. Now the shoulder joint is further supported by a number of ligaments. Let's begin to add those ligaments. Between the acromion and the coracoid, the coracoacromial ligament, superiorly. From the coracoid process to the humerus is the coracohumeral ligament, superiorly. Three glenohumeral ligaments formed anteriorly, superior glenohumeral, middle glenohumeral and the inferior glenohumeral. Let's color these as well. Acromioclavicular, coracohumeral, superior glenohumeral, middle glenohumeral, inferior glenohumeral. Now taking an orange colored pen, let's draw a little gap in the capsule here, indicating the point from where the synovial membrane emerges out to form the subscapular bursa. Similarly, the synovial membrane also emerges out in the region of the bicipital groove to enclose the tendon of bicep brachii, allowing it to pass smoothly through the bicipital groove. Holding the two to downwards against the bone is the small but powerful transverse humeral ligament that holds these structures in place. So that completes the diagram. You can see that through the process of drawing this diagram, you are able to understand so many ligaments. Let's now do the last bit that I always say one should do. Draw the direction of fibers. Somehow I feel that it's important that we should add this little factor to our diagrams, even for ourselves to understand in which direction the fibers are going. It also gives the examiner an idea of your own understanding. So let's now revise quickly. The shoulder joint is formed by the articulation of the head of humerus with the shallow glenoid cavity. 
The glenoid cavity is deepened by a glenoid labrum on the outside. Superiorly, there is a supraglenoid tubercle that gives attachment to the long head of bicep brachii. The capsule of shoulder joint is attached in such a way that it includes the labrum and the long head of bicep within it, making long head of bicep an intracapsular tendon. The capsule is supported superiorly by the coracoacromial ligament, superiorly by the coracohumeral ligament, anteriorly by the three glenohumeral ligaments, superior, middle and inferior. There is a small gap in the capsule here for the passage of subscapular bursa and laterally the synovial sheath emerges out through the bicipital groove enclosing the tendon of bison within it. The synovial sheath and the tendon are held down in place by the transverse humeral ligament. You can see how the simple process of drawing this diagram has familiarized you with a number of anatomical structures which form a part of the shoulder joint. Please use this process repeatedly to ensure you know the anatomy of shoulder joint well. Thank you students.